So in this video, we're going to be learning how to create our own blockchain. So most people have heard of a blockchain because of Bitcoin. Bitcoin uses a blockchain to store and verify transactions to prevent double spending attacks. But blockchains don't have to store transactions, they can store any data we want. So we're going to be storing strings in our blockchain. So here you can see the output of our program and this shows our whole blockchain. So if I scroll up here, you can see the Genesis block. This is the very beginning of the blockchain. And then after the Genesis block, we have the first block, the second block and the third block. And you can see each block has different numbers of hashes that were required to find it. So to find the first block, we had to do 1.6 million hashes. The Genesis block obviously has zero because that block was built into our blockchain. So what I did was I generated 10 random blocks and here they are. So let's learn how to create one of these. So our blockchain has just two classes. It has a block class and a blockchain class. And the whole thing is only about 60 lines long. So whenever we mine a block, we're adding it to the blockchain. And that's where this block class comes in. Every block is an instance of the block class. So every block has a number. It has the data we want to store and it has a pointer to the next block called next. Every block also has a hash and it stores the hash of the previous block. This is what makes the blockchain immutable because to change the hash of a block in the blockchain requires you to change the hash of every subsequent block because of this previous hash. The previous hash is what ties them together. The timestamp isn't really relevant to our blockchain, but if this blockchain was part of a network, we would use the timestamps to synchronize all of the blockchains. So you can see when we create a block, all we do is we store its data, but where things get more interesting is where we calculate the hash of the block. So to calculate the block's hash, we get the nonce, the data, the previous hash, the timestamp and the block number. We add them all together in one big string and we run that through the SHA-256 function and that gives us the block's hash. That gives us this hash here. So that's the structure of a block. And finally, this function just means that when we print out a block, we can see it in this sort of format here. So that's what a block looks like. So let's see what the blockchain itself looks like. So we have a blockchain class and you can see down here, we instantiate our blockchain class. When we have this for loop here, and what this does is it just generates 10 random blocks. That's why you can see the output here. I have 10 blocks. That's just this for loop that is continuously mining until it mines 10 blocks. And then underneath here, all we're doing is printing out each block in the blockchain. So a blockchain is pretty much just a linked list, except all the items in the list are tied together because of this previous hash. So you can see whenever we calculate the hash of the block, we include the hash of the previous block. And this is what ties all the blocks together because if I was to change the hash of any block, every block that comes after it is gonna have a different hash. So because a blockchain is just a linked list, to add something to the list, all we need is these two lines here. If you remember, every block has a pointer to the next block. So we set the next pointer equal to whatever block we want to add. And that adds the block to the end of the list. And this line just moves the next pointer up so that we can keep adding new blocks. But because this is a blockchain, we have to set the previous hash equal to the block that's currently at the top of our list. So self.block refers to the block at the top of our linked list. And because we're running this before we add a new block, this refers to the previous block. And then the new block, we have to set it equal to the current block number plus one. So the very first block is the Genesis block that's here. It's built into the blockchain. And then this dummy equals head equals block is out of a Python specific thing. When you're implementing a linked list, you have to remember where the start of the list is and you call that the head. So it's not enough just to say head equals block to set it equal to the Genesis block because in Python, objects are all passed by reference. So the, so the head and block variable would be the exact same. If I was to change block, it would change the head variable. So in Python, there's a trick. You can just type in the word dummy or any variable equals head equals block. And that will mean head doesn't point to the same object as block. And that gets around this sort of Python quirk for implementing a linked list. So the interesting stuff is in mining. So every block has a hash, you can see here, and every hash is just a number. These are just hexadecimal numbers. So the way you determine whether a block's hash should be put into the blockchain is you check whether the value of the block's hash is less than a specific target number. And this is exactly how Bitcoin does it. So here's where the nonce comes in. You can see the maximum nonce is two to the power of 32, which is the maximum number you can store in a 32-bit number. So the nonce has to be less than the target number, and if it is, then we accept the block. And that's why we can change the difficulty. So we set the target equal to two to the power of 256. But by adjusting the difficulty, which is up here, we've set it to 20 at the moment, so that will be two to the power of 256 minus 20, or two to the power of 236. So by increasing the difficulty number, what we're doing is we're decreasing the target range. So the acceptable range has become smaller, so it gets more difficult to mine a block because a block's hash has to be less than or equal to the target range to be accepted. That's how Bitcoin controls the rate at which new blocks are mined. And I can demonstrate that so if I set the difficulty to zero, every single block will be accepted because every single block's 
hash will be less than the target. So if I was to run this again and generate 10 blocks, you'll see it'll do it instantly. You can see it generated 10 blocks and we didn't have to wait. And if you look at it, you can see the number of hashes it took to calculate the block was zero because every block was accepted. But when I increased the difficulty earlier to 20, you can see this took 422,000 hashes to figure out this block. So if I was to change the difficulty to 20 and I was to run this, you'll notice there's no instant blocks anymore. It's actually taking time to generate a block. There you can see we had to make 1.8 million guesses to guess this block now as opposed to zero. And the nonce number is what we use to change our guess. So whenever we're trying to figure out the hash that will be accepted, we have to change our data somehow. So we have to change the hash of the block. The nonce is just a number that we increment every single time we make a guess. And by changing that one number, we're getting a completely different hash. So this for loop just guesses pretty much from zero to the maximum nonce. And every time we loop through, what we're doing is we're checking the current block's hash is less than or equal to the target. We have to convert it to an integer because we're using the comparison operator in Python. If the block's hash is less than or equal to the target, then we can add the block to the blockchain, we print out the block, and we stop mining because we've got the block we were looking for. Otherwise, what we do is we increase the nonce by one and we go again. And that's pretty much it for our blockchain. So I'll put all this code on GitHub, but that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favor, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. But that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.